Good morning and welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living Midtown Atlanta, where you are welcome. We're glad you're here and know that this is a place that we recognize everybody for their individuality. And we're glad you're here. So such is the nature of life that all it asks and all it wants is the opportunity to appear. And you are that opportunity and so am I. And and we have a declaration of principles, which explains a little bit of who we are and what we stand for. I believe. I believe. I believe in one God. One absolute power and first cause to all things. I believe that this power is perfect love. And creates out of a desire to express love. I believe all thought is creative and how I choose to think creates my personal experience. I believe in the unity of all life. And the immortality of the individual soul. Forever unfolding. I believe. I believe. I believe in the eternal goodness. The eternal goodness of God. The eternal loving kindness and the eternal givingness of God to all. And so it is. And so it is. And so it is. I have the great pleasure of introducing our religious science practitioner today, Norma Roberts. And what a practitioner is, is somebody that studied the science of mind principles for quite a long time. They've gone through a practicum and skills and have learned how to make what we think and what we teach manifest into reality. So with that, I give you Norma Roberts. Thank you so very much, Vance. And to all of you, it's such a pleasure to be here this morning. You know, right now we seem to be living in a world full of turmoil and fear. But how do we create a world that works for everyone? In Matthew 7, 12, we read, Therefore, all things, whatever you would do that men should do unto you, do you also to them. And in Science of Mind textbook, it says, I behold in thee his image. That's God's image. In thee, my friend, I see God, and through you I feel his presence. And in the voice that, that speaks of love, I hear him speak, for he is all, in all, over all, and through all. Here we have it, the golden rule of all loving conduct. Perhaps someone since the man who spoke those words in the great sermon have lived up to them all their lives, all the time, uh, but not many have. I haven't, and I don't suppose you have either. Yet how simple they seem, how easy they sound, how simple they are. How beyond even trying in our everyday conduct we think of them in our busy lives. Can we recognize that everyone is born of spirit and deserves the ever-present goodness of God? What is the main thing it takes to comply with this golden rule? It's a Simple idea, a simple feeling, that's love. What we want others to do to us is to love and respect us, to treat us with the kindness that comes from and with love, to show us that they think well of us. They think that we are wonderful, remarkably good folk. Wouldn't it be reasonable simple to try this? Does it cost anything? Except effort, maybe. I know the results will equal the effects that we uh, put into it, the effort that we put into doing something, we'll get 
excellent results. Therefore, love, which is ever present, makes it possible for me today and every day to love others and show them the love I want them to have for me and to show me. I have enough God's love to feel this for all people. And this is the way we make a world for everyone. And now we'll have a brief treatment. And as we pair up our service today, I invite you, uh, everyone, right now to relax and join me in knowing the truth. Just take a deep breath. Get relaxed. And accept as much as you can the resort, uh, that resonates with you as I speak in the first person. After this treatment, we are going to have a song. But let's go into treatment now. I know, and I know that I know, there is but one life, that life is God, that life is my life right here and right now. I know the spirit is always creating more of itself, that is more life, more love, more light, more peace, power, beauty, joy, more wholeness. In a ceaseless process of ever expanding good, you're creating. I am one with this power. It expresses through me and as me as I awaken to my divine consciousness, my divine inheritance in this conscious raising season. I know and I affirm that my world is infinitely good and creative as I choose and celebrate life, love, light, peace, power, beauty, and joy for a world that works for everyone. Because we live in a field of unlimited possibility, infinite potential. In the midst of overflowing gratitude, love lights my way and divine intelligence expressing as wisdom in my intuition leads me to people, places, things, and experiences that nourishes my awakening consciousness. With clarity and confidence, I let the faith of God reside in me, and I act in faith and allow demonstrations of perfect health in all areas of my physical body. I experience abundant wealth as money that flows to me constantly through expected and unexpected channels. Love and creative self-expression unfolds before me in joyous celebration of my oneness with the infinite. In a thought of restriction, like a fear that was previously held is released as I surrender to the infinite goodness of spirit. I accept all manifestations that are perfect for me. With great peace and gratitude, I release my word to the law of mine and know it is already done. 
as together we say. And so it is. All right. It is my distinct honor to introduce <laughs> our guest speaker this morning. Um, Reverend Kathy Mastroianni is um, an ordained minister through the Centers for Spiritual Leaving. And for over nine years, she's been the executive director of the Science of Mind Archives and Library Foundation, which is a nonprofit separate, but works closely with Centers for Spiritual Living Home Office. It's dedicated to pre preserving, protecting, and sharing the timeless wisdom of science of mind, the you, and the yeah. world. For four years, she was a minister of CSL's Heart of Peace Initiative. She was executive director of a rural domestic violence shelter and safe pets program for 10 years. She led a weekly empowerment group for that same shelter for an additional five years. And currently she shares spiritual wisdom on her Spirit Songs Creation Facebook page. Kathy lives in the mountains of Bailey, Colorado. She enjoys curtain baking chocolate, which I love chocolate, and exploring our beautiful world together with our honey, JT bringing peace wherever they go. Here we have Reverend Kathy. Thank you. Thank you so much, fans, and thank you everyone here at CSL Midtown. It really is a joy and honor to be here today. And what I'm guided to start with is I just invite us just to put our hands on our hearts and just breathe. Breathe in the beauty that's already been expressed here from uh, from that beautiful treatment from Norma and the beautiful song and just anticipating the good and greater good that's unfolding here during our time together. Hmm. Hmm. So as we are grounded in spirit, uh, grand rising to you, grand rising. That is the global theme for Centers for Spiritual Living for the entire year and especially for this month. And I give great honor to Reverend Casey Taylor, who put together these global themes and she was the inspiration. I was grateful to be on the Global Themes Committee for 2024. You'll find mine in September on peace. Yes. And today, so Grand Rising, as you may have heard from other, other ministers this month, was it's from African-American uh, youth who use this phrase instead of good morning, you know, good morning, good morning. Grand rising is so much more intentional. And so that is ours to do today is to just be more intentional to use these teachings and wisdom of science of mind intentionally to really create the best day yet, as the song just said. So again, it is a great honor and pleasure to be here. And to recap a bit through the month of January, the first week was It's a New Dawn. The next week was It's a New Day. The next week is It's a New Life for me. And now we're feeling good. Now we're feeling good. And to me, feeling, the feeling part really is the miracle grow of spiritual mind treatment. It's the miracle grow of creating a world that works for everyone and creating the world that we want in our own lives. Very powerful stuff. And I, so I am executive director of the Science of Mind Archives. And what I love to do is to share about the archives. It's been just such a blessing to be executive director for these nine years. And I remember when I first started, I was a practitioner and just getting ready to start ministerial school. And I discovered, I felt like a kid in a spiritual candy store. It's like, oh my God, oh my God, all this beauty and wisdom that's within the archives. And this month, January, which is again, traditionally back to basics month for centers, like your center here, it's, Ernest Holmes birthday. So we just celebrated the birthday boy uh, a week ago, a week ago today. And I'm so blessed to be with Diego as the producer here, as we were together last Sunday, having a birth, a virtual birthday party for Ernest. And so I'm going to invite him to share some slides with you. I have some information to share. So yes, uh, that's me. We are feeling good. 
Are you feeling good? Are you feeling good right now? Nice. Okay. My job is done. Maybe I'm done. No, just kidding. All right. All righty. And so here are the many faces of the spiritual journey. Hmm. Which one do you feel like today? Which one do you feel like today? Yes. So feelings are important. And I think some days, even within minutes, we feel like all of those faces, don't we? And so there, I love this picture because this is Dr. Ernest Holmes with Janet Gaynor uh, and his birthday. Gaynor, thank you. I'll say it right, Janet. And look at him. How is he feeling? How is Ernest feeling right now? Oh, my gosh. He was just a joyous soul. And to me, it's really important. When I first found Science of Mind and I was becoming a practitioner, uh, someone from the archives came and spoke. And I said, oh, my gosh, I love this teaching. I'm taking vows. I really want to go deeper and learn who was Dr. Ernest Holmes. Who is this man, you know? And so, you know, I think I manifested a spiritual principle because I said it definitely. And now I'm executive director of the archives. And so now I know a bit more and I get to share it with you. Because again, for you, I mean, even if this is your first time here or if you've been doing this a lifetime or for decades, you know, to go back to basics, to learn about our roots is just so powerful. So what about like your family, your personal family? Because uh, again, what is an archive? What do they do there? <laughs> you know, who are you people? And so to think about your family, think about your parents, your grandparents, your great grandparents. What would it be like to be able to sit at the feet of your grandpa and hear it say, grandpa, tell me a story. Tell me a story. And to hear the wisdom of your family to hear about how they traveled different countries, their experiences, and how they became who they are today, and how that brought you to where you are today in your life. Well, this is this is our spiritual grandfather, Dr. Holmes, or even great-grandfather. We're getting some generations in here. It was over a hundred years ago that Dr. Ernest Holmes wrote his very first book, Creative Mind. And then from there, he became an ordained minister through divine science. And he just kept hearing this calling, this calling to teach, this calling to share this timeless wisdom, this loving, inclusive wisdom that has been brought to us today. And the neat thing is, it really is timeless. And to me, if you can hear it from source and learn from it from source, from Dr. Holmes himself, it just deepens our own spiritual connection. It, sp it deepens our own connection to source and to who we are. And we get to choose who we want to be in the world. So that's why we're here today. So we did. We had a birthday party last week. Uh, Dr. Holmes turned 137, and I might say he is looking good. So we do a virtual party. We've been doing birthday parties at the archives for nine years, and this is our fourth virtual party. And you can actually find it on the Science of Mind Archives YouTube channel. So you can you can relive relive the memories. And we just had some really amazing speakers. So we had these speakers like Dr. Christian Sorensen, Reverend Stephen Rambo, Dr. Lloyd Barrett, the voice of God. And I'm so grateful that Dr. Barry Ebert was co-host with me. Reverend Mark Gilbert is on our board of directors, and he has been doing amazing work to bring the archives out to you through our website, through our YouTube channels, and through books. So we're so there's a lot of wisdom. So you it's kind of neat. It's entertaining. You you learn, you hear these inspiring speakers talk about how science of mind transformed their lives. There's some incredible music, like Reverend Cynthia James, Reverend Kit Holmes, who I adore, Denise Rosier, all of these. It's just so it's a it's worth it. It's worth it to check out that, but plan it on your calendar for next year. Put it on your calendar because every year it's virtual, it's free, 
and it is a fundraiser to support our archives. And uh, it's, it's a good time. And so I'm going to invite you to listen. So again, I want this to be experiential. I want you to hear Dr. Holmes. And maybe you have before, and maybe this is your very first time hearing his voice. And so I just invite you to go into your heart and hear this meditation from You Need Never Grow Old. Let's take these words from Psalms as the thought for our meditation today. Thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. And as we dwell on the meaning of these words, quietly in our own minds, let us see if we cannot come into a complete realization that we are one with the ageless spirit. In the quiet of my mind, I realize that I am one with the eternal newness of life. The spirit is working in me and through me now. My body is alive with the life of God. My mind is illumined by the light of God. There is no darkness, no discouragement, no defeat. My mind is refreshed in that one mind that forever gives of itself to its creation. All that the Father hath is mine. I open my mind to accept the good gifts of joy and happiness. I open my heart to know that the ageless spirit is my life now. And I know that my body and my experience shall manifest the image of life in all its newness. And I shall dance and sing through the days of my years with gladness in my heart. I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever, knowing that my cup is full to overflowing with the only life there is, the life and the eternal youth of God. Mm. Just take that into your heart. So it is. It's really profound, I feel, that when you can hear his voice, then all of a sudden when you're reading from Dr. Holmes, you hear him uh, as you read. And I'm going to the next slide here. So I think the deep thing... So me, you might have seen pictures of him like this in his robes and all formal... But let me tell you, this is the Dr. Holmes I know. He's very down to earth. He's, he's very humorous. He's very real. He speaks truth with a capital T, and we're just so grateful to have that. This is the Holmes family. And so as we're celebrating his birthday month here, so right here in the middle it is Ernest. Um, and then there's his brother, Jerome, and we'll see if I can get them right. And then his mom, Anna Holmes, who was very famous in the movement. Ernest, his dad, Williams, there's his brother, Guy. And then he had more brothers, too. There was eight boys. So we bless Mother Holmes for taking on those eight boys. And uh, just beautiful souls. We're just really grateful for their light. And then here's an older version of the Holmes boys. And, and you can kind of see Ernest right here. They were all very well educated and or ministers and really learned kindness from their parents, Anna and William Holmes. They, they taught them kindness and love. And they, they really said no to fire and brimstone and all those negative things. They said, no, it's all about love. It's all about love. 
And I think it's cool that in the very first practitioner class of 1927, uh, they have all their signatures, which is really cool. And then up here it says teacher, Ernest Holmes, and then there's Diane Rundle, but then Anna C. Holmes. Anna was one of, was Ernest Holmes' first practitioners in the first graduating class. So she became mother homes to the movement and she did lots of service work and just supported the world. This is Ernest and his wife, Hazel, with their dog, Prince, down here. And Hazel was just by Ernest's side every step of the way. They were just such a loving, beautiful couple. And this is Fenwick, his brother Fenwick and Ernest. Uh, and we make up stories when we don't know things. And so this is them writing their last work, The Voice Celestial, The Voice Celestial together. And Fenwick wrote this uh, book, Ernest Holmes, His Life and Times. And it's a nice biography. And what I love in the very beginning, the very first chapter, it says, Ernest is born. A new age must wait upon one to proclaim it. And no matter how great his future destiny and dignity, he must be first born a baby. And none of these thoughts were in the mind of the neighbor who had been routed out of bed at three o'clock to traverse the fields of snow and help bring a child into the world. And so they were in Lincoln, Maine. The temperature was zero degrees and they're this little farmhouse and all the other boys were in the loft. Ernest is the youngest of the, of the Holmes boys. And you can just imagine who knew this little baby was going to be the founder of an entire movement that we are all a part of. And so we just say, thank you, Dr. Holmes. Thank you for shining your light in our world. And on the Science Mind Archives website, we do have the life of Ernest Holmes under free wisdom. There's a lot of good things happening at the archives. Once a month, we do these uh, free lunch and learns. Uh, there, uh, You can hear Ernest Holmes' voice and you can learn from it. And we go into breakout groups as well. So the next one will be uh, right after Valentine's Day, Thursday, February 15th. Uh, and again, our website has it all. If you get nothing else, sciencemindarchives.com has audio recordings. We're, we're constantly, every single week, we're bringing out more and more for you. And so we can. So I just want to move into a time of thinking about back to basics. You know, we have, there's the four main chapters in the beginning of the textbook is the thing itself, the way it works what it does and how to use it. And so this week is our how to use it. And so how do you use it in your life? You know, how do you use these spiritual principles? And I'm wondering what, like right now, what's on your heart? I know that your center, Center for Spiritual Living Midtown is going through an exciting time of transformation and change as you're calling in your new perfect minister. What's going on in your world? And again, let's just kind of give it a moment and bring it to your heart. What is it? So we can consciously use these spiritual principles in our world, consciously use them. You know, and personally, I just want to share an Atlanta, Georgia story of my own. So I had just gone through a divorce I then, I lost, like a year or two later, I lost my job and I was just searching, 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 searching. It's like, what do I do? You know, I was already a practitioner and just had this longing within me to make a difference in the world. My upbringing was kind of rough. My uh, mother committed suicide when I was six. My dad died when I was 14 and I was raised by my 19 year old six sister. And so it was just kind of like, Oh my gosh, why, why, you know, <laughs> you know, what's going on here? But something in my heart said I was, I was here to make a difference in the world. I wanted to help others who may be going through life challenges and changes. You know, change happens all the time, but when we can learn and use these spiritual principles in our life, it can be so much more graceful, so much easier. And so there I was, my sister invited me to a convention at, or was a workshop in Atlanta, Georgia. It was uh, how to up level your business. It was the year was 2014. 
And I got this clarity. I said, I want to be a minister. I want to be a minister. And so God said, okay. And within 24 hours, I got a phone call in, inviting me to interview to be executive director of the archives. And I said, I thought I said minister, God. <laughs> but God laughed. And uh, she did. And she, um, and sure enough, here I am, you know, nine years later as executive director of the archives, but I'm an ordained minister. It was just, again, how amazing to be in the archives. I just started ministerial school. And actually, Dr. Bob Dean was the president of Holmes Institute. I mean, God just like laid out the, gold, the red carpet for me. It was amazing. So I'm at home office in the archives with all the wisdom of the ages, praying with Dr. Bob Dean, the president of the Holmes Institute, every morning. I mean, I was just so blessed. I just, I mean, God is good all the time. And so for us to get really clarity on what we do want and really let God surprise us, we have to trust. We have to trust too and take those steps. And so here we are talking about how to use it, how to use these spiritual principles. And also about, as Norma talked about, revealing a world that works for everyone revealing that world. Now, what does that look like? So what does it look like? What does it look like for your center to really reveal a world that works for everyone? You know, to get that clarity, because one of the things I personally love about this teaching and this movement is it's so welcoming. You can come from whatever faith path originally and, and shine your light. You can be you. You know, whatever your religious background is, whatever your relational background is, your sexual orientation, whatever color your skin. I mean, it really doesn't matter because deeply we are one and we teach that deeply we are love. Now, if you look behind me a little bit, you can kind of see her. That's green Tara. So that's my background of, of religion because I was more yoga and Hindu. And I think what Green Tara represents is she's a bodhisattva. So she's of the Buddha. And I think each one of us. So she, if you can look really close, she's stepping her foot off the lotus, off the lotus petal, which means she's going out in the world to make a difference. And so a bodhisattva is on the spiritual path of enlightenment. But they stop and they come back to bring everyone else with them. So we are here to bring everyone with us along the spiritual path of enlightenment, of love, of peace, of joy, to love one another, to see the God in everyone, and to see the God in ourselves. So I'm going to invite you to take whatever that is, is on your heart as I wrap up with a prayer. And I'm going to use, whoops, let's get the correct book. Uh, from the Science of Mind textbook, you see it's kind of well-loved and falling apart, but I love it dearly. Because Ernest Holmes says something so beautiful that I want to include into all of our prayers. I want you to take this into your heart, and just like Norma so beautifully said it in the first person, Ernest speaks in the first person. So just take a breath, breathe in, hmm, exhale and listen. I am a center in the divine mind, a point of God consciousness, life, truth, and action. My affairs are divinely guided and guarded into right action, into correct results. Everything I do, say, or think is stimulated by the truth. There is a power that is in this word I speak because it is the truth and it is the truth. There is perfect and continuous right action in my life and affairs. All belief in wrong action is dispelled and made negative. Right action alone has power, and right action is power. And power is God, the living spirit almighty. This spirit animates everything that I do, say, or think. Ideas come to me daily, and these ideas are divine ideas. They direct me and sustain me without effort. I'm continuously directed. 
I am compelled to do the right thing at the right time, to say the right word at the right time, to follow the right course at all times. All suggestion of age, poverty, limitation, or unhappiness is uprooted from my mind and cannot gain entrance to my thought. I am happy, well, and filled with perfect life. I live in the spirit of truth, and I'm conscious that the spirit of truth lives in me. My word is the law unto its own manifestation and will bring to me or cause me to be brought into its fulfillment. There is no unbelief, no doubt, no uncertainty. I know, and I know that I know. Every thought of doubt vanished from my mind that I may know the truth and that the truth may make me free. And so I just know that this divine truth is within each one of us and it carries us forward into this day, into this week and into our lives. May we truly reveal a world that works for everyone. Peace on earth, peace in our own lives. And may we be uplifted in our bodhisattva selves to really reveal peace, love and joy in the world. So I just release all these words into that divine law that always says yes and fulfills it in ways beyond anything we could ever imagine. We trust, we say yes, and it is good. And I invite you to anchor that with me by saying, and so it is. Namaste. Thank you, Reverend Kathy. What a wonderful talk and explanation of the archives this morning. We're truly grateful to have you with us this morning. Thank Thanks. you so much. And now I'm going to go into our time for prosperity. So for us to continue here, we need your contributions. Uh, we appreciate everybody that supports this center, and we love and appreciate you. And as we go into this transition time, we're, we're looking to have a new minister. But in the meantime, we've got these wonderful, wonderful speakers that are coming every single week. Um, so if you will say with me our affirmation of prosperity and you can, I live in a universe of abundance as I freely and joyfully give, I join in the divine flow and all that I share with life returns to me multiplied abundantly. And so it is, you can scan the QR code or go to cslmidtown.org slash donate. That'll take you right to our donation site and you can do that. And now I'm going to turn it over to our board president, Lee Huffman. Thank you, Vance. Um, oh, thank you, Reverend Kathy. It's amazing talk. And Norma for the uh, practitioner uh, word today is just beautiful. Uh, thank you to the team, uh, to Ego and company that are keeping things together there and everyone who is watching online. Uh, just it's been great. Uh, we have some good news today. Uh, the last quarter of 2023 has seen a bit of a turn uh, in several spiritual and religious communities. And uh, the Global Centers for Spiritual Living has seen growth both in the number of um, people that are tuning in to our messages, either live or online, uh, and in financial giving. So that's good. Things are turning. Um, it's been a while um, that things have gone down because of COVID, and now they're going back up just a little bit. And we appreciate it. It's because those of you that are out there are giving to our center and because the transition team is managing the funds so well, and uh, we're doing such a great job there. As Vance said, as we continue to grow, we're going to be looking for a new minister down the road. And uh, in the meantime, we have great speakers coming. So March 4th, um, 2024 is gonna be marking our 13th year as a center for spiritual living. And um, we enjoy invite everybody to mark your calendar and uh, join us. Uh, at the community center in Atlanta or online on Sunday, March 3rd, for our celebration service, followed by our annual community meeting. Uh, that'll be both live and on Zoom. It's gonna be a short meeting because um, we're right between the service and food. And so we're gonna, we're gonna keep it short, but we will talk about the finances um, that we went through last year. We'll look at 2024 and a little bit into 2025, and uh, we'll just give everybody an update um, and uh, just good ideas as to what's going forward. So um, 
the center provides amazing services and the way that the centers are growing now is through people's presence, their participation, and more than that, people telling other people about these services. So I'd like to ask you to send out the links to our Facebook page and uh, the wonderful um, talks that are out there and uh, to the archives. Um, that's just amazing. I appreciate Reverend Kathy talking about the archives. And I've been out there a lot and seen a lot of good things online. So the centers um, are just growing because you are getting the word out. So if you can do that for us, we would appreciate it. And I'd like to hear from you. My email is president at cslmidtown.org. And the general email, if you want to come to a get to a practitioner or something like that, or just give us general feedback is info at cslmidtown.org. So now for the coming events, uh, first is on Tuesday is Boost Online. And um, it's a live talk with a practitioner and Tuesday at noon uh, till about 1230, longer if we need to. But you can get there by Zoom. So go to cslmidtown.org. On Sundays, we have our study groups online and it's from 10 o'clock to 1045. Uh, you don't have to have read the uh, book that they're reading. You can come in, listen in, talk, contribute, give your thoughts as well. And it's a great small group community there that um, has some more in-depth teaching. And then our celebration service next Sunday will be both live and online. Our great, a good friend of ours uh, is Gene Bell from here in Atlanta, uh, Reverend Gene Bell. And the new theme for next month is Divine Discomfort. And uh, her talk is going to be on lessons in uncomfortability. So that should be very interesting, especially since Gene is such a great speaker. Uh, we've had some great speakers here. So Garden Hills Recreation Center, 339 Pine Tree Drive Northeast in Atlanta, Georgia. And uh, please plan on staying for the community brunch. And um, please come out if you can. And if not, join us online for that. Um, community meeting is coming up on March 3rd, as I mentioned. And right now, over on Zoom, uh, Reverend Kathy and some of the practitioners and a few other people will be online to talk about uh, the archives a bit more. And so you can do that by going back to cslmidtown.org and uh, clicking on the Zoom link. And remember the passcode, which is um, 642540. Um, I've typed it so many times uh, to get in. So we appreciate all of you and we love you all. Um, now, please join me in our closing affirmation, which will be up here in a minute. <laughs> there we go. Uh, I leave this place now knowing something better than I knew before. I go forth into the world with a heart full of love and a mind full of good sense. I look at the world in a greater way knowing that I have within me everything I need to create the life that I desire. I give thanks for this understanding, and I am grateful for the spirit of life that lives through me. And so it is. Have a good week. There is a power for good in the universe greater than you are, and you can use it.